Hello there, and welcome to an episode of um, Rants. It's Chris Andrew, of course, and uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting day. Um, uh, Andrew Postecoglou took his first um, press conference as Tottenham Hotspur manager, Tottenham Hotspur men's manager, uh, today, and uh, I'd say that I think um, people, what people are seeing in the group are quite impressed with him, and um, he kind of he spoke clearly. He spoke of his. Uh, I was going to say he spoke of his goals, but uh, pretty much lack thereof. He spoke of um, doesn't actually set goals as such. That um, it's, a case of, it's just a case of literally building the team and then trying to take them as far as they can go. And um, I like that because people are always asking. Because the first question people are, people are asking any kind of manager is, so how do you feel you're going to get top four? Are you going to get top four, or is it going to be top four? And um, as you know, I really hate those questions. I'm not a top four guy, as you know. So. Uh, those kind of questions kind of piss me off anyway. But, um, yeah, so he basically just uh, sets out, well, basically, from well, my understanding, is that um, it's all about the player's conditioning and it's all about uh, uh, not exactly setting a goal because that can kind of, like, uh, limit or hinder the, 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 the team, as it were. And they just have to have it in their heads that they can pr- uh, be as good as they can be, can progress as, as high and as fast as they can be. Sorry about the sound there, if you can hear the fan, that's literally what it is, it's just a little bit on the warm side here in the south of England. Um, and so it's just a basic, a basic case of uh, aim as hard as you can, and uh, do as, as good uh, do as, as well as you can. And um, inevitably, it seemed that um, the question was always going to be about Harry Kane, you know, the, the, the subject about um, about alleged um, two bids from Bayern Munich, um, uh, Bayern Munich, as our German colleagues would say. Um, which he kind of just batted off, really. Impressively, I have to say, I was impressed with his answer because you would get some managers who would pander to that kind of uh, press release and maybe, to, uh, you know, maybe some fans don't want to hear it. They, they want to hear, Kane is staying, Kane is that. Kane will do whatever Kane will do. And as I said in the group, as I said in the group, it was kind of a, it's a kind of a case of, I'm just tired of the seasonal seasonal merry-go-round that happens at this club regarding Harry Kane. If he stays, he stays. He's got a year left. If he stays, cool. At least we know that he's gone in the next 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 season. If he's if he goes, then I just want to know that he is going to go, and uh, and we get good money for it, and that's fine. But I just want the I just want the um everything to concentrate everyone to concentrate on getting the team as high as we can, as can you know conditioning the teams so that's well, well, a well, better place to challenge in the near future, and it will take a couple of seasons. I've already said that as many times again as well. And um, there is a, a couple of quotes. Well, <laughs> it's my favorite quote. There was um, after the journalist asked him about uh, Harry Kane and where, he, and if he sees um, if Kane sees his future with the club, that's essentially what the question he was asked. And Foster um, Coldblue's um, quip back was um, uh, <coughs> that's question three. About Harry Kane, um, me and the uh, crew were running a, a kind of a sweepstake on who will get uh, on uh, where the, que- the Harry Kane question will come. And uh, was, he, was, he said he was kind of hoping that um, he'll be quite that he'll be quite high. He thought that Kane would be number six, and that he thought that he'll be quite high. So he, the, 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 that he thought that Kane would be number six because he, because he thought that journalists would be more interested in um, in him and what he's going to do. And I like that because. That kind of is never going to shut up the um, Harry Kane questions, is it? But um, I thought that was a funny put down, and uh, yeah, kind of a it's kind of the, the kind of manager that I really would will, will respect this season, and um, it is is refreshing to see, it's refreshing to hear, it's refreshing you know to know you know that we have a manager that's not going to just <clears throat> sit there and uh, try and um, try and style out an answer regarding Kane staying or not. By the sounds of it, um, Kane isn't back yet from his um, from his break. So um, when he does come back, he's going to um, he and uh, Foster Coglu are going to sit down and talk about the future in terms of Spurs, in terms of in terms of playing, in terms of style, in terms of his expectations. But the Kane just says, "Thank you for that, boss, but I don't give a shit. I'm going to leave anyway." Then then he leaves. I'm just so done with the whole will they will he won't he kind of thing that we see every season. At the end of every season, just because Harry Kane is Harry Kane, and um, don't get me wrong, well, I'm risking things for saying this. Don't get me wrong. Um, 
he is, you know, he's one of our best players, you know, one of the best, best strikers in the world, yes. But for me, the, the name on the badge, and it's not the real Spurs shirt, it's one of the fake ones, but uh, the name on the badge is more important than North London. The name on the badge is more important than any name on the, on, on the back of the shirt. And that's literally how I see it. If he goes, he goes. At least then we can then move on. If he stays, then I know we've got, then, then you know, next season is his last season. And then we know he's going for sure on a free. That's fine. I couldn't care less. Well, I mean, I couldn't care less about whether we get money for it or not. All I want is an end to the saga. That's literally all I want. And then we can just move on. That's literally all I need. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, so, yeah, he battered that, battered that question off. And then they styled it in a way that um, then talked about the squad and the team and how he sees them moving forward, how he wants them to move forward, and how he, and his kind of, um, he's got, where he's, where he sees the club, he says that um, the only way he knows that he's successful is that the, is that the fans think that he's successful. And I like that. Because it means that, um, oh, I know that for many fans, success is, is uh, finishing fourth every season. And as you know, for Boston Coglu, once he builds his uh, squads up, once he gets the, um, the style going, once he gets the players in that, that will do, that will, that will play it the way he wants, you know that he's not going to settle for just measly fourth place. Every team that he's played at, they've won the National League. And that's literally all it is. It just, it, it all it needs is like, he just needs a time to bed in. And that's, and that's what I am more worried about, really, is whether he'll get the time to bed in. And, um, you know, that's, I mean, I mean, what, even, even one of his quotes is, you know, this is one of the quotes from, from his uh, press conference today, where he says, I'm a guy that likes a rebuild. My goal is to make special moments here. And you know, from the last video, or from many of the videos as well, during, even during the during last season, where I said that this team needs to be gutted out, this team needs to be rebuilt. We should have done this rebuild at 2019 at the very, very latest. And we didn't do that. We didn't do that. And uh, instead, we went for the quick fix managers in... Um, in uh, Jose Mourinho and um, Antonio Conte, and apart from Jose Mourinho, well, that only just leaves two of them. But uh, apart from Jose Mourinho, the rest have been a, a failure. I think Jose Mourinho was a success because he left us in a final, and I can't say that Conte has even got us close to a final. Whether that's down to Conte or whether that's down to the players, downing tools, I say it's a mixture of both. But at least Jose Mourinho got us to a final, final, and he was sacked six days before. That's, what, that's which I will never forgive. The only way I, well, I'll say that I will only forgive that if Postecoglou was allowed to take us to a final or take us to a title. That's the only way I'll forgive that. And in order for him to do that, he needed time to rebuild. And he's a rebuilding manager, as he says. You know, that's his kind of. Um, well, I said in the group, and literally this is just what I said in the group after um, reading that. I said, no more shortcuts, shortcuts, and quick fixes. This is what I'm on board with. Basically, just um, responding to his quote. This squad needs to be rebuilt, to be built up slowly, and he better get the time to do it. He better get the time to do it all, and that is paramount to what I've been saying for a nine on six months now. Especially at the edge, was after Christmas, I think. I mean, uh, I mean, well, even longer than that. You know, you needed a, we needed a, uh, a project manager that said that at the time, um, but it is what it is. Um, and more importantly, the short-tempered amongst the fan base better give him the leeway to do this. You know, and that is important to me because we know how short-tempered our, our fan base can be. Remember when Pochettino uh, first arrived. And I think the, his first game, um, his, his first his first game was away to West Ham, wasn't it? And um, we won one nil. There, Dyer scoring. Oh, the fans there falling over, falling over Eric Dyer. Then, and then they're falling away from him. And then, I might be getting the game season mixed up, possibly, but we never had the best of starts. I know people will try to attribute that to uh, everything's Levy's fault, isn't it? But uh, that's the way it is. We had a lot of slow starts. I remember one time we had a draw at home to Stoke. This must be the second season afterwards, not, not the first season, but the second season, I think, under Pochettino. And um, we drew with Stoke. This is the second game of the season, and the team were booed off the pitch. 
the second game of the season, the first game at home. And um, I think it must have, uh, I want to say it was 2-2, but maybe it wasn't, I think. But I know that um, we did lose quite a big lead, I think, or a decent lead. And then it was, it was drawn and the fans booed the team off the pitch. I remember that one vividly. And that's the second game of the season. If I, if I was the second, if that was the second season. If that was the second season, then <laughs> it just shows the, um, the, the lack of, um, yeah. It should, just goes to show that the, the, the fact that the, the lack of patience in, in the fan base, and that is the, the bit that's uh, going to concern me the most because this is not going to be some kind of quick fix rebuild. It's going to be a slow one. It's needed to be. It needed, is it, where a lot of the first team players are going to be cut up, but I'll come to that in a minute. We'll talk about the first team players being leaving. Um, and uh, and it is going to be a slow one. It's not going to be one season. It's not going to be, might not even be two seasons, but the third season, like I said. That's when we're going to see the best of this team. That's when we're going to see the challenge. And, um, you know, I know we've bought players like uh, Madison. And I know we've, um, yeah, and then, you know, them way there. But, and I know he's 26 right now. But, you know, it might not be until 28 until he starts realising his, uh, you know, his potential. And even then, he's still going to be in his prime. He's only going to be 28. And um, in that time, you're going, to see, you're going to see Spurs motoring as well. And that is going to be the important thing that it will be an important thing really as far as I'm concerned because because we do need that rebuild and um, yeah if it's going to be slow and painful then it's going to be slow and painful we've had these quick fixes and they in, in really in reality they haven't really worked and that's the way it's going to be that's the way it has to be um, Oscar Lewis had a, a message to the players um, there's another quote from it really just about being uh, open-minded and not bogged down by expectation and history, which is what I know, uh, alluded to earlier when, it, when I say he doesn't set any any goals. We are going to go down a different road, not because it's better, but be, just because it is me and that's what I do. I won't change where we're heading. It might derail for a little bit, alluded to what I said as well, uh, regarding it's not going to be a quick one, it's going to be a slow, painful rebuild. We need that. Um, there for a little bit, although... Uh, I won't allow it to be for long, and it's about who wants to get on this train so that we can get to our destination. Music to my ears. I mean, I might not be music to many fans' ears, but it's music to my ears. And you know why? Because, like I said, it should have been done in 2019. The team should have been gutted out completely, everybody, all change. And we're moving on. I mean, we're going to see, we're probably going to see Hugo Luis uh, moved on. Great service for the club. Eleven years at the club, I think. And um, yeah, obviously he didn't get the send off. You know, it would have liked. You know, it would be better to collapse you know, in the stadium. But um, I know he's been back at um, Hospital Way doing some training. But um, it like Inter Milan are hard fast and you know, steadfast in getting him. That's going to be fine. And then we go on to the, move on to the, to the other players as well. That um, I mean, I know. Everyone's saying what they're going to say about Kane, but it is what it is. Um, and then other players that have been kind of um, linked with, well, Spurs fans have been linking with exits for a while, might not actually um, come to fruition. I mean, uh, Tongi and Dombele has been um, training quite well with um, a possibility that Cockler has even come out and said that he's liked what he has seen from the players that have trained. I know people are going to say, oh, that means well, it's like in Dombele. But um, I'm guessing he's talking about most of the players, but I don't know, I don't know if Ndombele was actually singled out. Or not. But here's one of the quotes from regarding Ndombele. Um, this is actually referencing him, but um, what I mentioned before was um, uh, during the week, and I think he said something yesterday or something regarding the players, and I think he'll tie that down to, to Ndombele. But here's him talking about Ndombele specifically. Uh, Tongi's been good. He's been working hard at training. They all are. They've got no option. I take things as I see them. He's obviously a very talented footballer. I'm pleased to have him here and part of the group. What that means long term, I'm not going to get into the definites. He may decide it's not for him. That goes for any player. When he, when we get all the guys in, it'll be great to see who the team meshes up, how the team meshes up, and takes decisions from there. And there have been pictures of Ndombele actually uh, really enjoying training. I mean, there was one there was a still of him taking on um, one of our kids, uh, Iago Santiago, and. Um, he looked like a, a, a fresh, lean, 
his fresh lean self. He looked like um, he was ready and, uh, and you know, and, and hard at it. But um, I think it was quite a telling there. And I don't think that just re- relates only to Ndombele. I think it relates to a lot of players as well. And there was rumours of Harry Kane. Who knows? It probably refers to him as well. Uh, Le Celso, who, um, sorry, Le Celso, Chelsea, uh, Le Celso as well. I mean, all probably relates to him too. Um, now, you know, if they want to get on board and take things as well, and not in the, not in the Antonio Conte way, where it's like, uh, you do it, as I say, every, what I say is, I micromanage you every second as it goes, and then we'll think about it. It's not like that, it's not going to be micromanaged, it's just a case of if you have the right attitude. And I know it's an easy quip, and it's a kind of a, a tropish kind of quip to uh, come out with and say, oh, he's lazy this, he's lazy that. I mean, people even con- they commented how lazy he was walking from his car on the first day to the training ground. The thing is, if, you, if you're going to hate a player, then you're going to hate him for life. It doesn't matter what he does, you're just going to take issue with it anyway. And that's exactly what uh, most, most people have done with him, Lombele. Um, me, I've always said I'll, I'll give, if the manager wants to give him a chance, I'll give him a chance. I'm not going to hate on the player. I'm not going to, I really, I don't, not the time to insult players. I call them as I see it on the day, any given day, you know. And this is going to be a new season, it's going to be another new flipping manager that um, Ndombele will have to um, play under. And um, I mean, he was, was gotten by, um, uh, was he gotten by Pochettino? Yeah, he was, wasn't he? And then he played under Jose Mourinho. He played under uh, Antonio Conte. He played under Ryan Mason. So he's going to be chopping change. That's only, what, three years? Three three years and three different managers. Oh, oh. Four years and three different managers. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. But, um, I don't know. Yeah, Ndombele it was um, by, uh, by uh, Mourinho, I think. Yeah. I can't remember. Especially on the one just seasons I'd rather forget. So that is um, a good warning to the whole group, I say, and not just doing Don Belly, although that's kind of how it's style and that's how people look at it. But um, that's for the whole group because we need players on board. It is going to be a project, and that is where um, <clears throat> and that is it, where the issue is going to lie. So um, you know, if you know, the players that want to come in, the players that we have with us, want to. Um, if the players want to get on board with that project, then that is all well and good and fantastic. But I know there's a lot of players that are there that um, have been toxic under three different managers now. And they just have to go. Yeah, they just have to go. And um, the, 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 I, mean, I have said that um, players have been with us for three or more years. Just leave. Just leave. Because we have a fresh start. And that's hopefully what's going to happen now. I mean, we've got, obviously, got in Vicario. Um, and he's going to probably going to replace um, Hugo Lloris. Uh, Fraser Forster from what I understand of what he said in that conference he's got a back injury so he's going to be at hospital way while we're out in uh, Singapore um, so that's, 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 that's that one there and um, uh, Kane obviously comes back later um, and you know he hasn't buggered off to um, Bayern Munich and might see him out in Singapore so we shall see what happens um this is my favourite quote from um, Paul Stockholm Blue um, for that press conference. I want to bring success to this football club and put it where it deserves to be. The, uh, there's an enormous challenge here. I love that. That's what attracted me most about this role. What a great challenge. What a great story. If we get it right. For that to happen, it needs everything to go its way. Um, you will need the cooperation of the board. You'll need the cooperation of um, the hires up. You'll need the cooperation of uh, Scott Munn, you know, once he starts. You know, he's going to be the, I think he's going to be the head, I can't remember what his title is going to be, but basically the guy the guy ahead of the uh, director of football. So I, I think we're yet to, be, yet to sign the director of football unless Scott Munn's going to do the entire role until we actually get one. So he's going to need the cooperation of all of them. And also he's going to need the um, malleability as well. well oh, maybe even the steadfastness and stubbornness of um, Postacoglu to make it work. But that's what it needs right now. And um, and that's the thing, if they get it right, if they get, the rebuild happens the way it should do, the way if he gets the people in that he wants, and uh, I'm not going to be the, one of those that will be like, uh, oh, depends on what I leave it. I'm not, I'm not going to go down that route. If he gets the rebuild that he wants and he gets it down to a T, in a couple of years, we're going to have a great side. Just look at what happened with Celtic, you know. And I'm not having the whole 
insulting of um, of, an, of, of another man's league. That, that, I mean, that is a good sign. I mean, hell, Celtic were the first team, British team to win a to win, win the European Cup, weren't they? So you know, can't exactly all be bad in Scotland. You know, and they still kind of um, really well, not punch above the weight. Well, suppose they do punch above the weight, you know, especially in Europe. Um, but you know, as he as he even said in the press conference, you know, they say that um, yeah, in um, in Scotland you can only if you're Celtic or Rangers, you're you're only going to finish first or second. But you have to finish first because in that case, finishing second is still last in a way because you because you're just a loser. So um, yeah, he's right in that aspect because what's the point of having a two-team league and you finish second all the time? It's useless, isn't it? So he managed to finish first. I think for three, three, three seasons, two or three seasons straight. You know, man's a born winner. And that was after he get, got everything into place. And then he got um, what he's done at, in Japan with um, Yokohama Flugel Marinos. I think that's what they have for. Um, Yokohama Marinos, I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, Brisbane Raw in Australia, you know. Then they rave about his style of football, though, when he's at the term, it's akin to watching Barcelona. Uh, <laughs> Raw Salona, I think that was, that was nicknamed in, in Australia. Um, and even uh, Pep Guardiola, when he, when he took his Manchester City team out to Japan, was it Manchester City or was it Barcelona? I can't remember. It must have been Manchester City the timeline. It must have been. And he said that that was the hardest game he's ever played. I think um, uh, the, uh, Pep's team won 3 1, but. They said that um, their pressing was on point and their keeping of the ball was fantastic, you know. And that I don't mean under under uh, Mourinho and under Conte. I said I didn't mind the style of football as long as it was successful. But my mistake in that, I mean, I don't I don't listen to the whole of boring whatever boring football this that and the other. My mistake with that was that they thought and the board thought. It was just going to be a quick fix, and the players there could not give a damn. And that is the issue there that um, kind of rankles me. Really, that um, they just basically thought just a few minor tweaks. It was never going to be that way. So maybe in hindsight, hiring um, quick fix managers was not the idea. It was not the, it shouldn't have been the plan. What they should have done was hire a project manager. What they should have done was brought in uh, Posta Coglu straight in after um, they sacked Pochettino. Maybe that's what they should have done, but they thought that everything was in place after Pochettino was sacked. But the reason that Pochettino failed and, fa- and floundered later on, you could argue he failed and floundered in every semi final and final they came, a- came across, but uh, that's not really a conversation we're having now. Um, they, they, we could say that's the reason that we failed and floundered under, uh, under Pochettino late in those situations is because that the um, the players just didn't have the bottle. And even in his, and new Pochettino didn't have the bottle. Always changing things up in big games. And, you know, even when we're challenging for the league in crucial matches, always changing things up when he didn't need to. He just kept with what got him in that position in the first place. Champions League final, case in point. Uh, Lucas Moura. Uh, Kaki beat the same bush each time, but, you know, he would have been the most hyped guy. He didn't do much after... That's a, that's a final, but when you played in the finals, you started the final, who knows what he could have done. He would have been so hyped. But we went for a quarter fit and Kane, and that's what we, and that's what we got. We got nothing. We just kept, kept hammering the, the same Liverpool door, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result each time, and it didn't happen. Then other, uh, but anyway, the only one going to go into that, yeah, that that's the whole by the by. But, But it's a case of, you know, you know, after Pochettino had gone, we should have brought in a project manager straight in to rebuild the side. Because we weren't going to let Pochettino rebuild, then at least give it to someone who will rebuild. And we went for the quick fix managers. And that was our undoing, because while we've fallen behind and behind and behind, um, well, as I, I know I did say, arguably, Conte, um, Pochettino was uh, Sorry, Mourinho was the most successful because he got us to a final. But that is beside the point. It still was probably a mistake in hindsight to hire him. When we were on top, you know, halfway through Pochettino's um, tenure, if you wanted to get rid of him then, bring in Mourinho, he 
probably would have won this league because we had everything in place at that point. That's just the timing of it. Well, that's just literally the timing of it. And um, that's kind of how it's kind of, as well as come back to, to haunt us. So that is basically um, the the, um, the important bits out of that, um, uh, uh, his first press conference as a Tottenham manager. Um, well, tell me what you think. Did you, in, if you, if you watched it in full, did you enjoy what he had to say? Did you enjoy what the, the I mean, the bits that concerned you the most, the journalists asked those questions. Did you like the answers it gave? To me, it was very um, straightforward and very forthright. And um, it basically just uh, kind of said the stuff that um, was the most important to him as opposed to what he thinks that the journalists and the fans want to hear. And that is what commands more respect, really. That's the way I see it. And um, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, but you know, comment below. Tell me, t tell me what you think. It is going to be an interesting time under um, Andrew Postacoglu. And um, this is going to be an interesting era under him. I look forward to it. Look forward to that uh, game in Singapore now to see what it looks like. So hopefully, they'll get a few more players, hopefully, a few more leave. Um, with that being said, I think um, I know I've got um, a message saying that um, Mickey Fonda Venn was going to be our next signing. But um, as, um, as per usual, you know, when 99 um, uh, ITK say this is going to happen, this is why it's going to happen, always believe the one that said, mm -mm -mm, think about it in a minute. It looks like um, uh, foul, foul, uh, Wolfsburg have um, um, put up the price now from 35 million euros to 45 million euros, around about 38, 39 million pounds, just because Liverpool apparently come and sniffing. So um, I know that Fonda Venn has, um, has agreed terms with us, but it looks like that might be um, something that we have to do. Um, Park and uh, you know, park in our back pocket now, and probably go after Edward Tamsoba from a Bayer Leverkusen. Um, the um, Burkinabe uh, player it should be an interesting one. I, mean, I would say he was probably the better player out of the two. I know a lot of people were wanting to find the vent for some, for some reason, he's younger, but um, you know, you know, but uh, Tapsoba is uh, more experienced out of the two, probably the better, more all round player out of the two. But um, it all depends, it depends what you're kind of looking for and where, how you want to match, match up with. Uh, Romero and uh, and the die who looks like he'll be staying well, until at least the end of his contract, which I think is probably next year is it? or two years time. So um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. You know, there's gonna be a lot of changes. So um, let's just see what happens. And uh, looks like a pasta cock lose all over it. But uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. Uh, let me know what you think about pasta cock in the press conference. Let me know what you think about the stuff he has said and. Uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing more from him. I cannot wait. That's how it feels right now. But, uh, once again, thank you for watching. Come on, you Spurs. And you all take care.